part. The amino terminal amino acid chain trace is here in yellow starting at the amino terminus. It coils up in what is referred to as a zinc ribbon motif, interacting with a part of the polymerase two surface colored here in green. After that, the polypeptide chain of factor B does a remarkable thing. Instead of returning to solution, it passes between the clamp and the wall across a part of the surface we refer to as the saddle, plunges down towards the active center, then returns to cross the saddle again, and as you'll see, join up with the C-terminal portion of this protein molecule. We refer to this loop as the B finger, and it will immediately, I think, have become apparent to you, it occupies a similar location to the DNA-RNA hybrid helix in a transcribing complex. Now, to emphasize that point, what I will do in the next slide is to superimpose uh, the B finger from this co-crystal structure with the DNA-RNA hybrid helix from the previous transcribing complex structure that I have described in detail. And what you will see is that there is actually no clash. The two can coexist in regard to the template strand of the DNA. There's also no clash between the B finger in yellow and the RNA at positions 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, but beginning at about position 6 and thereafter, uh, there is a serious uh, incompatibility of the DNA-RNA hybrid helix with the B finger. Now, to emphasize the point about the first five residues of RNA and their capacity to coexist with the B finger, we perform the experiment shown in the next slide. We look here at the interaction of polymerase and a five residue length complementary RNA with a template DNA bound to a sensor surface. And what you see is that a stable complex with RNA as short as five residues is only formed in the presence of factor B. So evidently, B is capable of stabilizing, supporting the formation of an early transcribing complex uh, as short as length five. Uh, RNA uh, five residues or less may be incapable of a stable interaction and being retained uh, for productive transcription of, a short, of an early transcribing complex. Of course, when the RNA grows beyond length 5, then I, as I told you, a clash with the B finger inevitably occurs. Now, if so, the B finger and the growing RNA will compete for space on the polymerase surface. If the B finger wins that competition, then the RNA is discharged. It's released. Uh, this is a well-known process. Uh, it's referred to as abortive transcription. The polymerase must start again and try over. If, on the other hand, the RNA wins the competition, then B is released. And as you'll see in a moment, with B goes the Tata binding component of factor B and the promoter DNA, the polymerase can now escape the promoter and uh, go on to transcribe the rest of the gene. The second co-crystal structure of the two that I have mentioned I would show you is of the central component of factor F with RNA polymerase, now in the form of a transcribing complex. <clears throat> what I'd like to do before coming to that second structure is complete the story with regard to the C-terminal portion of B. And I'll do that with the aid of this slide, rotating around to a suitable view. The C-terminal portion of B is here in pink. It was solved long ago by Burley and colleagues uh, as a fragment of B in a co-crystal with the Tata binding protein shown here in green and Tata box DNA. Uh, in a ball and stick representation, the Tata box DNA in that structure was sharply bent. If we simply extend the ends of that bent DNA with a linear B form model, then we arrive at the picture shown in this slide, from which we surmise that the role of the Tata binding protein is to configure the DNA to the contours of the polymerase surface. I'll show you the same thing in a space filling representation, rotated around to make one last point before going on to the structure with F. It takes one and a half turns of the DNA double helix, passing from the Tata box to the saddle. Then we know it takes 12 residues of nucleic acid from the transcribing complex structure to the active center. So 15 plus 12 is 27 residues, which corresponds nicely with the conserved distance 
from the Tata Box server transcription start side of about 25 to 30 residues for almost all our MFMS2 promoters. So in this way, uh, the B TBB complex brings promoter DNA to the polymerase surface at a point from which the DNA need only follow a straight path and the transcription start side of the DNA will be juxtaposed to the active center. Now coming to the complex with F, I show it to you in just a couple of slides in two parts. First the nucleic acid and then uh, the protein. So the nucleic acid in the new structure is yet unpublished and done by Guillermo Colero. Uh, begins the way you saw before. You see the DNA double helix entering from the right and the DNA-RNA hybrid with RNA uh, associated to the template strand of the DNA. Uh, what this structure shows that we never saw before is the rest of the transcription bubble. So what was evident previously was only half the bubble entering duplex and template portion. Now in this new structure we see also the exiting DNA double helix and the non-template portion. So a complete transcription bubble. The reason why uh, we can see both uh, downstream duplex and the non-complex strand is because of interaction with F that constrains these features in the structure. So the protein part of F is indicated here in yellow. It contacts both the non-template strand and the upstream DNA duplex where it reforms a double helix in the wake of the transcribing enzyme. One last picture of you from above shows you the interaction with F in a form that you will see in the remaining slides. But I particularly call your attention to the fact that F is not a globular protein. In fact, it's really not a protein structure at all, except in the context of its interaction with polymerase, a most unusual uh, protein structure indeed. Now finally, uh, let me I'll come to the significance for the mechanism of initiation of transcription. What I'll do is assemble uh, before you all of the available information to arrive at an initial picture of the initiation mechanism. So here are all the parts that have been solved to date. Uh, the, poly the polymerase, uh, what were the missing subunits that I mentioned before, uh, TBP factor B, uh, all from X-ray crystallography. Uh, F, structural information that comes from both X-ray diffraction and electron microscope analysis. And finally, structures of ENH that come from 2D crystallographic work uh, that we did some years ago. Now, the two subunits not previously included in the structure interact on one side, which we know from more recent crystallographic work. F, as I told you, interacts on the top and also on the side. Uh, the amino terminal portion of B, with the B finger plunging to the active center, interacts with the C terminal portion, TBP, and promoter DNA, as I indicated. Finally, E binds H, and E then escorts H to the polymerase surface in a manner, again, previously determined from two-dimensional crystallographic work. So this then gives us an initial picture of a complete minimal RNA polymerase to initiation complex, and uh, gives insight into the mechanism of initiation in a way that is summarized here, which largely recapitulates what I've already described and will serve uh, by way of review. So as, as I've indicated, TBP configures the promoter DNA to the contours, the shape of the pulpy surface. B subserves two purposes. It directs the path of DNA, bringing the start site in proximity to the active center. It also helps uh, support or stabilize the formation of an early transcribing complex. E brings H to the polymerase surface. H contains a DNA-dependent ATPase helicase that torques the DNA, it strains the molecule uh, between its point of interaction and where it's bound to be. It introduces negative superhelicity. The DNA is then now destabilized, uh, occasionally able to breathe open the strands, separate, and when that happens, uh, the non-template strand is captured through interaction with the central subunit of F, which I showed you already, the binding to the non-template strand. Now the bubble is stabilized, the template strand will in time find its way to the polymerase cleft and support the initiation of transcription. In the last minute or two,